the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Before his ascension, Christ told his followers, Go and make disciples of all nations. The commissioned followers went out into a hostile world and spread the good news through the power of the Holy Spirit. The church began to formalize its doctrine, particularly its doctrine of the Trinity, beginning with the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. This was the first ecumenical council. Under the guidance of great leaders known as the Church Fathers, the Christian faith developed a canon of Scripture and the Nicene Creed. The Church flourished. From the beginning, there were cultural and theological differences between the Greek-speaking churches of the East and the Latin-speaking churches of the West. In 1054, these differences led to a schism that separated the patriarchal center of Rome, which split from the other four established patriarchs. This would form what we know today as the Roman Catholic Church. In the early 16th century, Martin Luther developed a new understanding of the gospel that led to another split in the Western Church. That split led to the creation of many facets of Protestantism. An Englishman named John Wesley transformed the understanding of the faith again with his belief that all Christians could be sanctified wholly. Francis Asbury brought Methodism and its emphasis on holiness to the United States. He planted a seed that would germinate years later. The Wesleyan holiness revival of the mid-19th century nourished the seed that Asbury planted. It emphasized the theology and experience of entire sanctification. Phoebe Palmer was a pivotal leader in this revival. Holiness Christians across the nation had a common faith, but the regional pressures that resulted in the American Civil War caused many churches to split into northern and southern branches. Phineas Brzee, a Methodist minister, experienced the grace of entire sanctification as a pastor in Iowa. Later, when he moved to California, he met others who shared his experience. An ever-growing group of people who shared the vision of organized holiness and helping the poor gathered at the Christmas love feasts that Brzee conducted annually. With Brzee as one of its leaders, the group established itself as a new church in 1895. A Los Angeles physician and educator named J.P. Whitney helped lead this group and suggested the name for the new denomination. Whitney recognized that their mission was the same as the toiling, lowly mission of Jesus of Nazareth. The group adopted the name, the Church of the Nazarene. The new church erected a plain, simple building, which was called the Glory Barn. Brzee believed the poor and all classes of people needed fellowships that would be true community churches, faithful to the gospel witness and the deeper Christian life. One person called the worship services there, the greatest thing you ever saw. Brzee's group merged with other holiness organizations, the first uniting General Assembly was held in Chicago in 1907. H.F. Reynolds, who had ministered in New England and the Mid-Atlantic States, was elected General Superintendent along with Brzee. Reynolds gave great leadership to the United Church of the Nazarene, especially in the area of global missions. Los Angeles Nazarenes were passionate about helping the needy, the dispossessed, and immigrants. May McReynolds led the mission work to the Hispanic people in an arc extending from California to Texas. California Nazarenes also reached out to Japanese and Chinese immigrants in their communities. The groups that united around the Nazarene banner all ordained women. This common thread helped bind them together. Women were ordained in the East in 1892 and in the South in 1899. In the West, Brzee ordained Elsie Wallace of Spokane, Washington in 1902 and Lucy Knott of Los Angeles in 1903. At the 1908 General Assembly in Pilot Point, Texas, the second major merger took place when the Southern Holiness Church of Christ merged with the Nazarenes. This was the first church reconciliation of North and South since the great divisions that took place during the Civil War. 1908 stands as the official anniversary date of the Church of the Nazarene. 
Brzee and Reynolds were re-elected as general superintendents and presided over the Pilot Point Assembly. A third leader was added to general superintendents at this time, E.P. Ellison from the South. While many leaders helped form the Church of the Nazarene, Phineas Brzee, with his broad spirit and unifying ability, stands as the most prominent.